Um, so hello everyone. Uh, I'll talk about Luigi, which is an orchestra orchestration uh, data workflow framework uh, invented uh, by Spotify and being used in uh, ODC, in Crosswise, and in other places across Oracle Data Cloud. So uh, I'm from Crosswise. What Crosswise, do what Crosswise does is identifying devices of the same person. Uh, for example, that your laptop and your tablet are, belongs to the same person. Uh, we do so using uh, big data technologies, machine learning, other uh, techniques. Every week we process uh, 1.3 petabyte and we use Python, Scala, Java, uh, EMR, Hadoop, Tez, Spark, and Pig, which I'll be talking about. So uh, what is Luigi? Luigi is uh, an orchestration framework. That is, it is being responsible on the execution and scheduling of the workflow. Uh, it is used mostly for batch processing in, uh, as opposite of uh, online uh, processing, no streaming, uh, though it might be used for that purpose also. And it handles uh, the definition, the wiring, or hence the plumbing, and that's why Luigi, because Luigi is a plumber, and uh, the execution. A key term in uh, scheduling pipeline is DAG, which uh, the guy before me talked about. Uh, so here is what Luigi can do. Let's say I want to write, I have some file full of random stuff. I want to count how many lines are there that contains Shakespeare and how many that contains Macbeth. So I can run each line uh, serially or I can do stuff in parallel. And uh, that's that's um, that's an example for what you need uh, an orchestration framework for. Uh, talking about pipeline, uh, I happen to give this kind of lecture uh, once a year in the last uh, three years. So every time I need, I had to uh, form uh, to take a snapshot of our pipeline. So. In 2014, we had 3,000 lines of code, which is you know, a small-scaled uh, pipeline. Uh, we processed only 10% of New York City. And that's how our pipeline looked like. Then we uh, rewrote it in 2015. Uh, this is an actual documentation uh, for a new hire we had. And we thought to ourselves, yeah, our pipeline is uh, is simple enough, so let's just write uh, every component and the wiring it has. Um, a year later, this is what it looks like. And today, I, we, we dropped the support in the tool that shows us how the pipeline looks like, because there is nothing we can actually understand from a graph uh, made of 170 uh, vertices. Uh, we have global expansion. We process uh, all the uh, the, these mentioned uh, countries. And uh, we have a great framework to do so, and this is Luigi, which enables us to do so. Um, when you consider a data flow framework, uh, there are several things you want to consider. So there is the modularity issue. You want to write once and use many times. You want to be able to take components and just move them uh, all around. Um, as a programmer, I don't want to be using XML uh, to define the workflow because, you know, consider, um, actually, uh, uh, when I talk about 100, 170 vertices, this is the same portion. I mean, we run this 170 on every uh, geo. Uh, the full pipeline consists of 3,000 <laughs> vertices, and you don't want to be looking at um, three thousand nodes of an XML. Uh, so we want to define our uh, pipeline with code. Uh, we want a framework that is Hadoop agnostic. We didn't know on what technology we, would, we will want to use, and we didn't want to be bound to the same technology. And we want to have as many technologies supported out of the box. Um, there are many other things uh, that we wanted. Uh, I'll talk on some of them later. Um, monitoring and scheduling are actually a weak point, but then again, I'll talk on that later. 
So there are many competitors, almost every uh, tech giant that have millions of users uh, invented at some point uh, a pipeline orchestration framework, but uh, I prefer Luigi as can be seen here. Um, and here is what Luigi is, is made of. The key <laughs> component is a task. It's the logical unit. Uh, it consists of the logic, which can be written in Pig, Python, Spark, whatever. And the task can declare its own dependencies. It can also have an injected dependencies. Uh, it has parameters because then again, it's a part of modularity. You want to write once used many times. And uh, it defines the outputs that a task can have. And all of these are defined by code. Um, dependencies are actually defines the, the graph, the directed acyclic graph. Uh, these are also part of uh, Luigi. Uh, the parameters in Luigi are very nice because anything can be a parameter. It can be a different task, it can be a file, it can be an int. Um, lately, Luigi uh, introduced a, a notion of uh, static typing. That is, you can enforce the type of the parameters, so if Python goes into the uh, more statically typed uh, environment, so Luigi goes as well, the parameters are accessible from the command line. And uh, you can uh, set default parameters either from configuration, from command line, or by code. Uh, the last component, which uh, is a key component, is the target. The target is any a Python object that can be either exist or does not exist at the end. So I can uh, create an object that is bound to a file or to a record in a database or in S3, or I can even define a target as a cluster, uh, an EMR cluster. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This uh, slide should actually make things more easier, even though it could be more complicating. This is the relationship between the, uh, the things, uh, these components. The, uh, the purple thing, we didn't talk about it, the signature. Uh, when you're running Luigi, you are instantiating tasks. And these tasks have a signature, which is based on the parameters. This signature can be used as part of the output to identify uh, if a task has run, finished running, or should be running. Uh, Luigi has many built-in features. Some are obvious, some are not. Um, you can run tasks in parallel. You can define the resources consumption of every task. That is, this task uh, does a heavy usage of RAM, so I just want one of it to run at the same time. Or if this machine has uh, two giga of RAM and this one has just one, so I want to be able to fully utilize this information. Uh, if some task is more important or need to run, to have priority on others, uh, Luigi support this kind uh, of declaration as well. Uh, when we started, Luigi didn't have a central scheduling, but now it does have. That means that if I want to run a pipeline and, and not someone else wants to run the exact same pipeline, then the central scheduling will prevent both of us from running, from, from running the same task that produce the same outputs, and then we could be accidentally uh, overriding each other's outputs. So the central scheduling, which is now considered to be a best practice uh, when using Luigi, is also available. A very interesting concept introduced by Luigi, which is uh, also a good selling point, is the wrapper task. I don't have to define the entire graph in one point. I can define subgraphs, and I can uh, declare dependencies either from the task. The task itself can declare what, his, what its dependencies are, but I can also uh, do it from outside. So if, for example, I can tell that every uh, pig task need to have, uh, it depends on a pig to be, uh, on, on the existence of pig on this, a machine, then I can easily do so while the input for the task can be uh, controlled from outside. Uh, then again, everything is uh, done using code. 
there is a CLI which is also nice. And this is an example for a stock Luigi uh, code from the uh, Spotify tutorial. So you can see that uh, you can see how a task is defined. So there is a Luigi task, there are the parameters, the dependencies named, termed, uh, requires. Uh, there is the logic, which is the run. And uh, there are the targets defined in the output. Now look at the uh, requirements here. Actually, that's really nice because you, we can have dynamic graphs that depends on other external resources. For example, we could be ask, asking a database, an external database, what should be run, and Luigi will know what to do and what kind of graph to generate according to it. But this is a stock Luigi. Uh, uh, over the last three and a half years, we heavily uh, optimized Luigi for our uh, use cases. And this is what uh, our code looks like. So there is a pig task, which is general for every, uh, have the same. I don't have to redefine again all the uh, pig related dependencies. There are parameters which are uh, used only for pig tasks that are injected to the pig code, which can also be seen. And there is a more simpler definition of the outputs. So there is a clear uh, separation between the logic and uh, the definition of the task. Um, in Crossways, we use Luigi for many things. So there is, there is the obvious of uh, processing and pre-processing, but we also get the data uh, by using Luigi. We have uh, a partner which uh, tells us, go uh, crawl in this website and it will be written somewhere what the, uh, where are your files. So uh, we have Luigi doing it for us and provide the output which is the path which we need to download. And then there is another task which is used for downloading and uh, or for another Uh, and there is another thing, uh, we use it also for DevOps. We have an FTP server which automatically uploads things, then again using uh, Luigi to S3. We also do deployments via Luigi. That is the first time uh, a new hire comes, he gets his computer, so the first time he wants to run Luigi, we will download and deploy everything on his computer. We will uh, provide him with the uh, version of Hadoop everyone else is using, uh, Spark, Tez, uh, um, files that are commonly used. Uh, so that's another thing Luigi can be used for. And deliveries. In every week we send to our, to our customers huge files and uh, we use Luigi to orchestrate this as well. We have a database which tells what, part, what files each partner should receive and everything is done using Luigi and everything is also automatically done automatically and um, th there is no, almost no ops uh, to be done. Um, most of our improvement have been, we can, we can uh, categorize our improvement into uh, three categories, visibility, usability, and execution. Um, the uh, down point of Luigi is not having many uh, visibilities uh, frameworks or utilities, uh, and you had and we had to build all of these. Um, if you, if uh, people here are familiar with uh, Airflow, then Airflow's uh, uh, main benefits over Luigi are the these. But then uh, we made it. We created a service called. Uh, cost flow, which is done to uh, to track uh, the execution of tasks, uh, we provided a t we we built a timeline, so we'll be able to analyze how to optimize our graph, and we also track the uh, memory consumption and other metrics of the execution itself. Um, we heavily optimized the uh, requirements and outputs um, code, but here is another thing which is important to tell. These are not the kind of improvement we could recontribute because what we built on Luigi was our own business logic. So 
when th that's the main benefit of having uh, a lean framework you can build actually build your uh, business on it um, another thing we do no all right so uh, regarding usability um, as I said earlier, there is this uh, signature thing. Every task, every instance of the task have a signature. This signature can be used for um, identifying what tasks have run and which did not yet because, as I said earlier, each task know if to run or not to run by looking at the outputs. If the outputs rely on the signature, then we know what need to be run and what uh, does not need to run. Um, another thing we did was a smart task injection. If I can take part of a different run I made and, ex and inject it into a new run I want to, to do, and uh, we use Jenkins to schedule everything. And that hence the automatic uh, um, operation. Um, three main lessons we learned from using Luigi. So there is the signature for proof of run or any equivalent uh, granular uh, property which can, uh, which can accurately tell me if I need to run a task or not need to run a task. But this has another implication. It reduces the cost of running the same pipeline multiple times, which enables us to give the, our researchers and our developer the same pipeline to run. Um, data scientists are the field that, that uh, fires uh, most of the machine learning uh, businesses. And you don't want to give your researcher this room and tell him, okay, just give me a model and I'll run it. You want both the developer and the researcher to run on the same environment using the same code. And um, this actually gave us uh, a lot of time to work on um, on the real issues. I mean, the issues are not the training. The issues are skews in the data. The, the issues are the logic. So once both the developers and the researchers run the same code in the same environment, so uh, there, is, there is a big strength in it. Um, at first, we tried to do resource allocation also using Luigi, but that's not a good practice. I mean, uh, even our clusters, our EMR clusters, were uh, initiated from, uh, from Luigi, but then it, uh, we learned that it's a bit hard to control, so there is another microservice which, uses, uh, which is used to manage uh, external resources. And you cannot finish a presentation about any technology without showing how our life are better now than uh, as if it was before. Um, that's it. Thank you. Yes. Um, all right. So regarding the airflow, the downside of use. First of all, airflow was, uh, if uh, uh, anyone is interested, then airflow was made after people were using Luigi and they were like, yeah, I missed this and I missed that. So let's just build our own. Uh, a workflow framework and put our business logic also into it. If you want, if your business is the kind of business that is actually similar to that of Airbnb in terms of data processing, then yes, Airflow is, is a great uh, is a great choice, and there are many benefits over it. Uh, I think that um, Luigi is really good because it has no. Um, it has no utils, it has no business logic embedded in it. Um, so you can build uh, what you want. Now regarding the deployment, so consider this. Uh, the pipeline isn't just made of Python and uh, Pig. It is also made from the UDF you wrote. So if you want to uh, edit your code, and then upload it. So you could do that manually, but you can also uh, make Luigi do it for you. So Luigi, at the first, as a first step, it compiles our jars, it uploads it. We don't do anything of this type. 
uh, it asks the uh, microservice to run, to create uh, a cluster. It also runs the deployment of our code on it. Uh, I don't have to commit anything. It just take the, takes the code, compiles it, uploads the jar, and I can just focus on writing the logic and wiring. And uh, that's what I meant when I, I talked about uh, deployment using Luigi. So that's a great question. Uh, it all depends on how you generate the signature. The signature is some hash on the parameters you provide. If your code is also one of the parameters, which it is in our case, so uh, changing the code means, means changing the signature, means no same uh, target will be produced and the entire pipeline will be different from this point forward. There is also a down the downside, which is, uh, all right, I just pressed new line and now I have to, to, uh, to build everything, to run everything again. So uh, you, can, you can tell, you can, we have two mechanisms. One is a code version, which you can just change, set it and tell, all right, I change something, don't take the code as a parameter. And there is uh, the different use case, which is, the code itself, the logic, is also a parameter. If it changes, I, I mean, we are not talking about Python code here. So, so the way we solve this is by uh, adding a parameter, which is the code version, and which can be set either in the code or from the command line, from the execution. And this is how we solve it. In case of pig code, that's it more easily uh, solved. Um, when I was talking about internal scheduling and external scheduling, I was talking about the task itself. I mean, the task can declare its own uh, dependencies, and the same dependencies can also be declared from outside the task. Consider this. I'm writing a modular task that always depends on the existence of Hadoop locally. So the internal dependency is that I need Hadoop to, be, uh, to exist on the machine. And the external dependency is what is the input of this task. Now, when I'm talking about, uh, Luigi has no, uh, no central scheduler, uh, as you're talking about, as if it was a cron tab uh, or anything. That's what, that's what we'll use uh, uh, Jenkins for, for all the um, repeated uh, tasks. Yes, we do so. It, it, is, it is very easy. Consider con uh, the simplest example is, let's say, wrote a, a sampler, a task which all it does is sampling. Uh, I don't want to tell it what it does, so I can give it a parameter which is a different task. And the dependencies of this task would be depend on this task, on the, ex on the run of this task. Yeah, I can do so as well. As I said, uh, if, if I'm talking about deliveries, so I have a database which I query and tells me what files should be delivered, what have been delivered, um, what is currently being delivered. Uh, we do this kind of thing, and, and, the, uh, and this is Python code uh, that does so. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs>